This is Don't Panic, episode number 318, recorded August 23rd, 2021. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and of course, you. I am Sean Jennings, joined as always by a man who, uh, he's closing doors, but he's opening windows. It's Colby Rabideau. Hello, Colby. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. I should have uh, said he makes a better door than a window, but uh, that would have made sense. I've been told that more than once. Yeah, yeah. that's one of those old. That and um, I always love the one where they go like, oh, hey, who's, who sang that song? And you say the name of the band and then they say, let's keep it that way. <laughs> when, when you're singing a bad impression of a band. I always yeah. love that one. Those dad jokes. I always love that. Yep. Yep. Those are classics. Are there any more? Oh, I'm sure there. I mean, if I just Google, what's up, dog? What's up, dog? Is a dad joke now? I don't know. Maybe wasn't that not non ironic at some point? Like probably briefly. Uh, what does a lemon say when it answers the phone? Mm, I don't know. Yellow. What a, what kind yeah. of car does an egg drive? Um, uh, mm, I don't know. I a Yolks wagon. Yolks wagon. I mean, come on. Some of these are <laughs> some of these are really bad. <laughs> How do you follow Will Smith in the snow? I don't know. You look for the Fresh Prince. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. And then I got a bunch of these one-liners. Uh, that car looks nice, but the muffler seems exhausted. <laughs> yeah, these are... Thanks, Country Living Magazine, for this great list. Wow. <laughs> what do you call somebody with no body and no nose? Uh, what? Nobody knows. Oh, God, just nauseating. <laughs> Truly disgusting. I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. <laughs> I used to hate facial hair, but then it grew on me. How does the taco say grace? I did see this one on the list, but <laughs> you, you, I'll give you the reveal. Let us pray. Let us pray. This one's actually very like not good. What's a robot's favorite snack? Bolts. Computer chips. But I don't think that's good. Computer chips. I, I don't I don't I don't like that. Some of these are anyway. This isn't what uh don't trust atoms. They make up everything. Yeah, these are these are whack. Okay. Disgusting. Yep. Well, but let's get serious for a moment, Colby, because we're actually here to talk about the situation in Afghanistan. My question for you, is this the inevitable end of a 20-year American military boondoggle, or can it be laid square at the feet of the Biden administration who bungled the effort started by President Trump? Your thoughts? It seems inevitable, but what are you going to do? So are you saying you're pro-Taliban? Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Yeah, you, you That's the takeaway. <laughs> Yeah. Would you say you're anti-America or pro-Taliban? <laughs> Why not both? Just kidding. That's that's going to be the episode. This online <laughs> someday. That's going to be the yeah. episode title. Colby loves the Taliban. <laughs> you're welcome. I, I really hope none of us ever become famous one day because. Well, did you follow the Jeopardy host thing? The controversy around the new Jeopardy host. Well, I I very briefly heard that like they like audition. I mean, I don't I don't watch Jeopardy. I I haven't been following it that. Yeah, way, we're not retirees, like, so right. I heard they audition people and then they chose to make some dude who was like the producer of Jeopardy the host, and then it turned out that like he's the terrible person. He's like a real jerk or something. Yeah, you pretty much got it. He set up the auditions to basically favor himself because he was the boss who picked himself. <laughs> but the best part, and the reason I bring it up, is because 
he actually got away with it and he was named the host. And then some reporter right. went and found a podcast he did for a couple of years back in like 2015, 2017, right in there when he was executive producer of The Price is Right uh-huh. at the time. And he, it's exactly what you would think a white guy, executive producer, game show host guy would do on a podcast and just talk about like, cause he would have on some of the like prices, right people and stuff. And you have the models on and talk about like how they were fat and stuff when they weren't. And just like really, really gross, not like outwardly, but just like that level of like, Oh, this dude sucks. And, and a reporter found him and, and you know, made sure to pu- publish all the episodes and the excerpts. And I'm like, man, someday someone's going to do that to us where they're going to pull some episode from like 2015 where something not a, thankfully we're not that bad, but who, now, boy, there's a but lot of who knows? Like, you know, the world changes, Sean, you know, know. It's, things were different back in those days. I, I just feel bad for whatever poor intern unpaid intern has to listen to 300 plus hours of this program <laughs> where, I think arguably 85% of it isn't good. Like, I think the 15% that's good is, is good, but most of it is very forgettable. So I apologize. <laughs> sex to sex. I hope they sell a smart speed when that's, uh, when that's going. Yeah. When good transcriptions. So they can just control F, you know, <laughs> right. Colby loves the Taliban and other, other great things. I really don't love the Taliban. Okay. Oof, I was worried. Just to, just to set the record straight. Are you saying I made that up? Yes, I, I am. I don't appreciate that. It was a trap. Uh, um, Now, wait, wait. Before we move on. Yes. So the guy, like, rigged the, he rigged well, the contest? Well, rigged is a strong word. So here's the, the sort of high level of what happened, where Mike Richards is the guy's name. He was the executive producer of Jeopardy in Trebek's final year. Um, so he was there. It's not like he showed up when Trebek died, but he was there. Gotcha. Right. And then when Trebek passed, they said, we got to audition people. And the first guy they auditioned was Ken Jennings, former famous Jeopardy guy who did a decent job. And in his last week of guest hosting, he had like a scheduling conflict, which wasn't a big deal. They could have worked around it. But Mike Richards said, whoa, no, no. Hey, no, no, no. Don't worry about it, Ken. I'll guest host for you. Not a problem because he used to host. He's hosted game shows like years and years ago. And he's the most vanilla game show host you've ever seen. He's very boring. And so... I mean, his name is... Mike Richards. Mark, Mark, Mike Richards. Mike Richards. Un, un, unremarkable. Um, and so he said, no, 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 I'll do it. I'll do it. And, like, the press wrote it up as, like, oh, he stepped in at the last minute and all this. But, like, <laughs> he really didn't have to. Like, they would have been just fine. And he also positioned himself, like, the order in which they did the guest host. Like, he kind of assured himself really high ratings. And so when they got to the end of the search, he had high ratings and everyone, because he was like the EP, they're like, oh, he, he had low expectations. So everyone was like, oh, he did a great job, even though he did an okay job. And he was on the committee to pick the winner of the guest host competition. And guess who won? Mike Richards. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's well, absolutely right. crazy. And so when it came out, people were really uh, unhappy. They were really upset. I mean, he did an okay job, but... Um, they were looking for an excuse to get him in trouble. And uh, then this article they came out. He was also it. he was sued when he was at the Price is Right for, I think, firing a model while, because she got pregnant and some other really slimy stuff. Um, I think that's that's the one that I heard or something. I didn't hear. I hadn't heard about the podcast, but it was like. Well, that the podcast was, was like, the last straw. When that story came out, then he stepped back. He's, he's by the way, still going to executive produce the show. But he's not going to host it, and they're going to try and find a new host, uh, a new different host. So, nice. That's wow. that's the controversy right there. Not not a good look for Jeopardy. No. <laughs> you might even say that Jeopardy isn't Jeopardy. You should be writing newspaper headlines, man. That's good <laughs> stuff right there. That is good. How, did, did you just come up with that now, or have you been sitting on that? Yeah, that's good. Uh, off the cuff. Wow, that's really I, uh, good. Your improv skills are off the chart. Right. Damn. We haven't done the show in a couple of weeks, so I got a lot of like you know pent up uh, energy. Do you just have full, a you just have a note, You have a notebook full of jokes based on recent headlines, <laughs> like Jeopardy is in Jeopardy. Yeah, that That's could good. be the show title. Jeopardy in Jeopardy. I'm gonna write that in until we come up with double, something. Is that what Double Jeopardy is? Double Jeopardy. <laughs> You got it. Boom. There you go. It's in the spreadsheet now. 
Uh, Amazing. No, I was going to move on to talk about something near and dear to your heart. What is it? The great state of Rhode Island, where I was for a few days the other week. Rhode Island. Yes. Yes. Turns out uh, it's not an actual island. So that was my first thing I learned. No. There are a series of islands that kind are of part of Rhode Island, but like the the most most of it is is not an island. No, it's because... actually it's a it's a nice uh, mild place. I would say better than Delaware, but less interesting than everywhere else. Yeah, I appreciate um, that. I but uh, no, I was there for four days for a trade show for work in the great city of Providence. And Colby, uh, do you want to try and guess my biggest Rhode Island observation? Something I can say applies to the whole state that's very obvious there's a lot of dunkin donuts i actually didn't see that many to be honest with you did you drive there i did drive there what's it that the drivers are just stupid you're really close those had to be the worst quality roads i've ever driven on i was and it's not that it was some roads versus others it's like literally every road was <laughs> trash i could not believe it the the so coming back obviously i live in massachusetts and driving to my parents house in rhode island um you can tell if you close your eyes just like while you're driving zone out it, <laughs> maybe as the passenger in the car if you close your eyes you can tell when you cross the Rhode Island bo- cross the border into Rhode Island because suddenly the road is like eight times bumpier than it was, <laughs> it's, it was before. Not to bring up Afghanistan, but I think the roads are better in Afghanistan <laughs> than they are in Rhode Island. I mean, it was staggering to me how consistently shitty they were. And I'm like, yeah. where do you just not pay taxes there or they just spend your taxes on something more fun? I don't know. I really don't know. You know, I but, never... I guess I kind of paid taxes there, but not a, not in any meaningful amount. And uh, well, that's why at a big, time when I was important, people in. like yourself are moving out of the state, taking your tax dollars with you. Right, right. Yeah, I mean Rhode Island's a place, but people, uh, I think the drivers are bad there. I I kind I of think, drove straight to Pro. I didn't really drive around a lot. I think it's like they just aren't very good at driving. This, uh, our our driving tests were incredibly lax. Like I went to I went to like a regional school and there were people from Massachusetts there. And mm-hmm. so like like their driving tests versus our driving tests, like I can't I didn't have to learn how to parallel park. I still don't I've parallel parked a car like maybe <laughs> once or twice, but like I just avoid situations where that might might be necessary. I never had to learn. I had to like drive around the block. I think I only made like right turns. I don't even <laughs> I don't even know if I had to go left. Will, will, will you make a commitment right now, Colby? If I get you in a car, will you let me teach you how to parallel park? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I'm, that's actually, and this isn't like I'm not like insanely good at it, but I'm pretty good at parallel parking, and it does not phase me. So I would love to get you in a car and teach. There's like one secret you have to know, and if you can do that, you can parallel park anywhere. So yeah, I'm gonna take good care of you. Next time, next time I get a rental, I'll get the I'll get the damage <laughs> so, waiver. I was about to say, and... so if we you know crash into a few cars, we're good. It's fine. Uh, no, I drove straight to Providence. I didn't really drive around the state too much, but Providence, what a lovely city. I really liked it. It was very nice. I stayed uh, right next to the convention center, was at the convention center for a while, ate at a couple of the restaurants around there. And, uh, I gotta tell you, I honestly liked it a lot. It was very nice. Yeah. Did you pop down to the, uh, like the state house at all? It's, it's very nice there. No, but I did have to run and get lunch at the Cheesecake Factory at the mall. This is right across the street. So I was pretty house. darn close. Yeah, I've been to that Cheesecake Factory fives of times. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a valuable lesson that uh, if you have a group of 10 people you have to get lunch for, there's enough options there that everyone can find something to eat. That's true. I That was probably the first Cheesecake Factory I went to, and I think the people I was there with had also never been before. And it took us a very long time to navigate the menu because we just weren't prepared for the depth. Oh, well, you should have seen so real depth. 
I was standing in the trade show booth. So at a trade show, I'm in marketing. The sales guys are doing the sales stuff. The product managers are managing the products. My job is to just make sure nothing melts down. I don't really Mm -hmm. have like, I'm just like clean up and get people things kind of guy. But I'm also the lunch order guy. And so I pulled up DoorDash on my phone and was passing it person to person, like just put in what you want. And I'll order and go get it. But with the Cheesecake Factory having like a literal 200 item menu, it took it literally took like 45 minutes to get the lunch order taken from everybody because of just how long it took. I believe it. It's it's dangerous. It's wild. Dangerous. That's cool, though. I haven't been to where we used to go to the flower show. Okay. at, At the at the convention center there. I think I. I feel like that's the only thing I've ever been to there. It's a perfectly competent convention center. Yeah. It's a big it's building. Pretty pretty conventional. It is right down the middle. Yeah, no, it was interesting being at the uh, the first convention since COVID. Um because nobody was wearing masks. Um and people yeah. were shaking hands. Gross. Ugh. And talking at one another. And God bless contractors, but I saw more than one Trump won shirts or <laughs> here's your freedom with the middle finger or other such apparel. I nice. don't think those people are vaccinated. Maybe I'm stereotyping. It seems unlikely. So, but I got COVID. I came back and immediately got COVID tested and I tested negative. So <laughs> you stopped that sentence in the wrong, like the, how did I say it? You said I got COVID. And then you like stopped and like cleared your throat and you said, Test. I got COVID tested immediately. <laughs> yeah, I got COVID, Colby. I didn't tell you. Just forgot to yeah. mention that. You're like that doctor in Arrested Development. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, I got to get tape machine and, and listen to myself back, hear the things I'm saying. <laughs> I don't hear it. <laughs> um. Yeah, so that's the most exciting thing that's other than the tropical storm in my house under construction. But that's, it's been a busy couple weeks. That's pretty cool. We had, well, I think the tropical storm only just arrived like 20 minutes ago and is less remarkable than, than was expected here. So, well, there was, there was real panic at my house because it's under construction. It literally, my whole house, it's all plywood. <laughs> yeah. Um, But that wasn't even the the scary part. And we didn't have any real trees that came down. We just got a lot of rain and a little wind. But um, the contractors, God bless them. God bless them. Hardworking men. uh, Just leave shit everywhere from, like, nails to plywood to a giant dumpster in my driveway, none of which was secured. And so when I'm looking at the prediction of 50 to 60 mile per hour gusts, all I'm imagining is, like, my neighbor being decapitated by a flying piece of... (laughs) you know, metal debris ripped off my house or something. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I had to run around uh, and scramble to get everything put together and covered. And I got a tarp for the dumpster. And they took off all my gutters. Well, all my downspouts, I should say. So the gutters were on just like dumping water all over the place. So I jerry rigged up a gutter. I'll send you a picture. It's very funny. But um, oh, it sounds awesome. Yeah, it was it was. This all day Saturday, I ran around and then it came and it wasn't that bad. So that's good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that it was. <laughs> but they were here today. They were here installing windows and doors in the rain today. Uh-huh. It's crazy. I think they just really want to be out of my life uh, and away from this house. You spent too much time together. It's honestly, it's, I think they just keep finding new problems and they're like, no, this house is cursed. We got to get out of here before something even worse happens. Right. And that would be Yeah. Scary. Uh, I had, so we had like Sunday morning, we had like 15 minutes of like hurricane-esque rain and it was really windy and that like, that was all, but that 15 minutes, like the wind was blowing at the perfect angle where like when I got up, there was like water, like it had come through my, my boot, my crappy windows and like, it's like all over the, the sill and the the blinds and stuff. It was gross. Oh, that's why I'm getting new windows eventually. Eventually. Once they, uh, hack them out of your current yes. walls. 
if they can manage to remove them. Maybe I'll just have them put the new ones in, like, in front of the old ones. I think that's fine. Yeah, that's how it works, right? It's like wearing two condoms. You're just doubly safe. <laughs> right. That's what they did with the rest of my house. Like, there's another ceiling above my ceiling. It's like six inches up. I, I found put a new one over it. I found a double wall I didn't know I had in the basement. So I, I actually had them <laughs> cut in a brand new window where there wasn't one to bring yeah. some light in. And uh, now the window is like awkwardly set really far back because they're like, did you know there was a double wall there? And I'm like, no, no. How would I have known that? Um, so always surprises. It, it makes me wonder, like, how much space I could reclaim, like, like how much space did this apartment lose to? <laughs> that would like, be really funny if you're like, wow, Colby, did you put on an addition? I see here you got a hun- an extra hundred square feet. I said, no, just. <laughs> Just smart. I just just ripped out several layers of <laughs> of cosmetic plaster. <laughs> I still think we need to do a home improvement podcast. Uh, what a disaster it would be. I know all the things not to do. That would yep. be the, the gimmick would be I'll just tell you what not to do. Exactly. What to look out for. We could we could do it. It could be you and me and Matt. He has a house. He does. He does. Although he hasn't he had, they had a really bad ant infestation when they first bought it. <laughs> um, but other than that, he hasn't mentioned to me anything major that's gone wrong. Has you, have you seen his tomato crop? By the way, Matt Mariani, the only person I know who still uses Snapchat um, stories. So oh. God bless him. But you got to get back on the Snapchat to look at the tomatoes this man is growing. Wow. Someone should show him Instagram. He, I begged him. <laughs> Please, Matt, please. His wife's on Instagram. I say just post yeah, on her that's, account. Even that's, that's fine. Right. That's that's the only updates I've got. I did see that they were she was like canning tomatoes or something. Yeah, well he planted like six different kinds of tomatoes rather than different vegetables. And so he's got little ones and he's got big ones and they all look very nice. But I don't I, I was gonna I kept asking him what he's gonna do with them, and I guess saucing is the uh the right answer. It's the move. I today I walked in on a squirrel absconding with a full tomato from my garden. Oh, I thought you were going to say from inside your apartment. I was like, oh no, oh, oh that Colby, how'd they get it? Uh, no, well, you're, well, I mean, your garden is pretty stealable from. Yeah, isn't it? it's not super big. We tried to like jury rig some aftermarket uh, tomato protection, but it's not enough. It really, it's just made it hard for me to get tomatoes, but it's not made it any harder for the birds or the squirrels to get tomatoes. So you've just described most home security systems, <laughs> right? It's very inconvenient for me, but does nothing to stop the criminals. Uh, I, honestly, why don't you just get a car battery and electrify it? I, um, I'm not strictly opposed. I feel like you'd really have to do your, your squirrel murdering on the on the DL. Is think, that against the policy of the place? I don't think it's against the policy, but I feel like there are they like there's a there's a percentage of the population just around who would be upset by that. I was gonna say the other people who share plots at your community garden are probably not like pro hunting <laughs> enthusiasts. Yeah. Well like I grew up in a I grew up in Rhode Island, but I grew up in a you know, what you might call the sticks of Rhode Island. Like both of my grandfathers actively shot squirrels, like with BB guns, not BB guns, but like with, with guns out, like off, off their back porches. And for this reason, right? Because like squirrels and woodchucks, like eat your tomatoes and they get in, like we had squirrels, like get into the attic and it was terrible. So, you know, it was a thing, but I don't think you can do that here. Well, I've got a high tech. I've got a uh, a mole problem in my yard, mm. um, and they've they've made a real mess. So I've gone with the high tech solution, mainly because the poison did not work. Uh, that I got those sonic things you put in the ground. Uh, in the ground. Yeah, so they're kind of like stakes, and they got a little solar panel thing on the top, and you stick them in, and they make a uh, they make a like a but you can hear it. Like it's not like sonic like you can hear it and what's yeah. i've got like eight of them around the yard it drove me crazy at first because i'm like 
Da, 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 da. And I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? Da, 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 da. I, my neighbors must think I'm a lunatic or something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they're all over. And I, it hasn't gotten worse. I don't know if it's really gotten better. Yeah. But. Wow. I'll let you know. Rodents. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Coolby, unless you've got any other general shenanigans. Coolby? Yeah, like Coolby. <laughs> Coolby. Coolby. My friend Coolby. At, um, at the thing, the thing that I'm doing at the Recurse Center, there's a person who is there who started in the, in the gr- group before me whose name is Kobe. Like his actual name is Kobe. C O B Y. C O B Y. One letter off from me, which is crazy because I mostly respond to Kobe because, like, there's a, there's a subset of Very people who, who just like that's what they call me, and that's fine because there's no there's neither Col- other Colbys nor Kobe's around, so it's it's fine if it's not a problem. But it's su- suddenly become like relevant to my life. Where it's like, do you mean me or <laughs> or or the the me with one less letter? But this is where we got to start workshopping your nickname. This is right. this is where you need the alternate name. Well, maybe Coolby is Coolby. It. Coolby's good. I like that. It makes you sound cool. It makes you sound like like a cartoon cat or something, <laughs> like like from a kids series or something. Like Coolby the cat teaches oh, kids yeah. not to do drugs and to respect the police or something. Right. Maybe I could be on Paw Patrol. Hey, the thing, which right? by the way, I googled. So I saw an ad for Paw Patrol the movie on my Roku, and so I actually yeah. googled what Paw Patrol was, and I was like, this is so stupid. It's like dogs, right? Yes, although they have cats now as well. Well, see that Coolby the cat is 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 a member of the gang. No, they're like, but it's like you see in the ads where there's like the police dog and the fire dog and the like the ones the ambulance dog. But then there's like when you get to like the lesser characters, there's like a garbage truck dog and like some of these more B level characters. I think there's like a Coast Guard dog. Um, very funny. They have a I've whole underwater, a whole underwater crew that is like in a submarine, but they're dogs. <laughs> and they have humans in the world because they have like a human kid and it's a human city. But the fire and rescue is made of dogs. The logic is really whack on Paw Patrol. I got to be honest. Sounds. Uh, and then they have a rival city that's always trying to screw up their city. It- that is how cities work. And it, you know, they're, they're, but like they're causing actual issues like the fire and police have to respond to. So it's not like funny. I don't know. I don't get it. But I'm also not a child. <laughs> wow. And we grew up with, you know, the Power Rangers, which made even less sense. So what do I know? Right. That's the thing I haven't, I haven't watched in many years. I remember the Power Rangers movie where they were all like roller skating at the beginning. That's, that's all I remember. It was the 90s, Colby. Everyone was, was bleeding. <laughs> right. It's pretty darn extreme. Yeah. It's, uh, I, it's I, very extreme. I was working with Matt on a bad movie list I wanted to do a live commentary on. I may have to add Power Rangers, the movie, to that list. That movie is awful. I think somehow we must have, like, had that movie. Because, like, I've seen it multiple times. <laughs> I just remember large parts of it being very boring, frankly. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's probably why all I remember is the rollerblading at the beginning. That was the most exciting part. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Go ladies. Um, All right. Well, I think legally we have to talk about tech news. It's in the contract, uh, the unwritten contract with the fans. Uh, Really no news this week. Very quiet. There are a couple stories here in the rundown if you'd like to talk about them or if there's any other tech-related topics you would like to bring to the show, we can talk about those as well. Uh, phasing out magnetic strips? I think I think here's what... I think we should talk about this one because it's stupid and it's going to take 30 seconds and then we should talk about the metaverse because I didn't really read it. Okay, the two good reasons. So we're going to do one story because it's quick, and the other because you didn't read it. 
our, our, our quality <laughs> standards are off the chart. All right. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's get to this quick one then. We'll breeze right through it. MasterCard is phasing out magnetic stripes on its cards starting in 2024. Um, the idea is that between chips and uh, contactless payments, you won't need the stripes anymore. Um, originally, credit cards. Have you ever been anywhere, Colby, ever purchased anything where they use the old flat? Bed imprinting machines where they where they slide it over the card. I feel like I don't think anyone's done that to my card, but I've definitely seen that happen. Maybe with my parents, maybe like just in movies, like old timey movies. But yeah, I know what you mean. It's a crazy concept, um, right? But. Uh, Starting in the 1990s, the global EMV chip standard was introduced, the standard we use today. 86% of in-person credit card transactions globally use EMV chips. We went to the chip standard in the U.S. a few years ago. Um, the um, Yeah, so that's – you're right. That was quick. Um, now, do you know are our chips in the U.S. still different from the ones in Europe? Uh, in like annoying ways. From a technology perspective, I believe they're the same. From a does your bank work with their ATM kind of thing, that your your stuff may vary, but it's it's a global standard. Right. Yeah. I remember when we when Dan and I went to Europe a long time ago at this point. Um it was it we had we had recently gotten chips in many of our credit cards but when we use them there we still they no no one there at the time signed like they you didn't sign the receipt you just you had like a pin and you yes. your pin into their into the little credit card machine which is a good idea a very good idea <laughs> but we ours work differently and so you still had to sign the thing and literally every time you use your credit card, the person would be like a, a pen. Like they would have to like rum it, like leave and come back with <laughs> with a pen because no one had to do that except us. I went on a, when I first started traveling to Europe for work, they had to get me a special chip card because I was going to Europe so much. And I went with a colleague one time and it was their first time with their company credit card chip. And I think we were buying train tickets or something at the airport. And I put my card in and I buy my tickets and they put their card in and they go, why is it asking me for a pin? I said, well, you got to put your pin in. And they go, well, I don't know my pin. I said, well, I don't know your pin. <laughs> you should have set this up before you left. And I had to buy all their stuff for the whole week because they didn't know what the pin was on their on their company card. Yeah, that's a nightmare. Pain Thank in the God butt. you were there. I know. I was a real life saver. I knew my pin. I was prepared. That's good. That's my like travel nightmare. It's like just just something small that you could is totally excusable that you didn't know, but like deeply inconvenient that you didn't know going in. Like the time I took a train two stops too far because I didn't realize there was a button you had to push to open the doors. Exactly. Or the time that we purchased uh tickets for the train but not reservations so then we couldn't there was a train we just couldn't get on because we didn't have a reservation <laughs> oh that's amazing i love that yeah. story that's great and that's how i visited hamburg germany for 36 hours <laughs> that's one of the you know so funny when people travel with me they always say like They'll be like, oh, where's the restaurant? I'm like, oh, you go down two blocks and you take a left. And they go, like, have you been here before? How do you know that? And I go, no, I've obsessively checked everything <laughs> weeks ago before we left. Like, I don't <laughs> screw around when I travel because I'm never, ever going to be that guy nope. who screws up and gets something wrong. You know what the worst part of that whole train thing is? Is the only reason we were taking a stupid train is that I was like, oh, I want to take a train somewhere. I think it'd be cool. Colby, do you know when trains are the right answer? No. Never. No. Trains are <laughs> never. It is 2020. That's like saying, hey, Sean, when is a good time to take the horse and buggy? Colby, there's never a good time for that. We've moved past it. It's the future. We have planes that fly. Yeah, it's true. 
I don't know. You never know, Sean. They're, I heard they're putting like a bajillion dollars into Amtrak. They are. I, Amtrak has got to be some money laundering scheme or something, because it always <laughs> seems like politicians are pushing money into Amtrak, and then I never see more trains. I don't know. I I just don't know. Where? I haven't. I've I've uh. So I've cha- taken a train three. I I haven't paid for an Amtrak in like a year because I I'm just working through my like points from when I was taking Amtrak for work. It's very convenient to not have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, well they're they're working on the East West Rail here in Massachusetts, Colby. So you'll be able to take a train straight from Boston to my backyard. You lucky guy. Will it run more frequently than the, uh, what's the one that goes that way now? The, the, that, that they the run one Easter. a day at like the least convenient time ever. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cause I, I've looked at, I looked at that train before when like considering how to get out to, to, to like, to visit you specifically. And it was like, oh, it, the, it departs Boston at five thirty in the morning and like arrives in, and, and it leaves like the one that comes back leaves Springfield at like 10 PM. And <laughs> it's bizarre. It's so, well, that Who's was the thing. It's doing like, this? I, when I was flying out of Logan a lot, it was like, I would love to take a train from Springfield so to convenient. the airport. Like, hell yeah, I'm all for that. And then it, it was like, whatever the, it was like, a 10 a.m. departure from here and then like a, a 5 p.m. arrival or whatever like it was a weirdly long yep. time and it was like the time no flights fly that like awkward midday time it's awful absolutely awful. how does it how does it take them so long to get there too like, well that's what they only... need a gazillion dollars for i guess there you go you know it's who knows maybe soon we'll we won't need our cars anymore we could just train scoot out to uh Springfield or whatever. Yeah, come on out. See, Colby, name one famous thing about Springfield you could come out here for. Basketball Hall of Fame, the biggie. Okay, that's two. Can you (laughs) name any more? Those are good, though. And you've been to one of those, so. Yeah, the biggie. I've never been to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Is there another sports Hall of Fame there? There's the Volleyball Hall of Fame in Holyoke. That's what I was thinking of. Yes. Not not quite the same. No, you can course. come out. You can go to the uh, MGM Grand Casino. You can, uh, you can, uh, it's the birthplace of Indian Motorcycle. Oh, uh, the, I think Merriam Webster is still headquartered here. The Dr. Oh. Seuss Museum. Colby, take the train. Come on out to Springfield. Springfield, you know our slogan. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's a place. I actually am going to look that up. Or, well, maybe, maybe the alternative, Sean, is we enter the metaverse and then we never have to go anywhere again. God, wouldn't that be great? Then I wouldn't have to try. There's a whole Wikipedia page, list of city nicknames in Massachusetts. Springfield, the birthplace of basketball, the city of firsts, the metropolis of Western New England. Love that. (laughs) That's awful. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, let's talk about the metaverse. We got through uh, MasterCard pretty quick. Yep. Uh, in one of his classic awkward announcements, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is here to welcome you to the Facebook metaverse. What do we mean by that? Well, uh, he talks about uh, Facebook working on uh, as a metaverse company um, where they will, he calls it the embodied internet. It just gets creepier and creepier. But what they actually talked about is a new piece of software called Horizon Workrooms. Uh, it's an open beta, beta for the Oculus Quest, and it is a uh, VR experience specific for people, for people to work together in. Um, it's basically a, a meeting room, more or less. You can have up to 16 people in a workroom together with an additional 34 people over video call without needing a headset. And there's also a companion desktop app that lets you uh, beam a live feed of your computer uh, into the virtual space. And, of course, with the eye track, hand tracking and front-facing cameras, uh, It'll show your hands moving and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Um, You can draw on a big drawing pad or a giant whiteboard. Um, It's in beta, so it's a little buggy, but, um, you know, it's got spatial audio. So when someone walks in, people are walking around, their audio will move around. Um, Yeah, that's the, the general concept. 
comments on this are a the avatars look like me's like the nintendo nintendo wii like people that you would create they look like they look like someone tried to make them like slightly more like photo realistic but they didn't try that hard but they're like worse the than that they're worse than me because me's were fun and charming well right it's like they <laughs> they went they tr they try they in trying to make them slightly more realistic they made it super weird it's the uncanny valley of me's and i, I hate it <laughs> and i hate it because it, it's also very herky jerk because it is doing the real-time tracking which is kind of yeah. okay at best right and do you think now the people using this, do they have to have like little sticks in their hands to for this to work? Uh no. If you're using the quest, it uses the cameras in it to oh. I, now maybe if you're drawing on a board or something you do, but just for the basic hand tracking, I don't believe you do. Cool. Um weird. Yeah, I mean I think I'm going to try and be positive on this stuff. Um, is it great? No. Is it a usable first? Like, I remember, like, the Second Life era. Remember when companies were talking about having meetings in Second Life, and it was so stupid? But, like, this I could actually be like, you know, if I'm a guy, and you know this, Colby, you're a work-from-home guy. I mean, if I'm working over Zoom 24-7, if they said, you know what? If my company said, we're going to send you a VR headset, we don't have to do every meeting in it. But to mix it, like, yeah, okay, I would like, I would try it. And it would probably suck, but it, it's just different. I don't know. I can't fault them for doing something different, I guess. Yeah, I would try it. Like, there is a part of me that wants to try it. Because I, I use, like, the, like, first, like, alpha, like, dev kit thing of the first oculus or something that some one of our college college peers his like friend had one because his friend had like a weird vr blog or something yep but the, i haven't used the vr thing since then i don't think uh, i put so, on like, one of those like original dev headsets and got sick immediately <laughs> Now, I also yeah. know it's because it was, like, very different. I feel like I'd be okay with the tech now, but I put it on, and I'm like, this is cool, and I hate it. <laughs> right, and I'm about to throw up. Yes. That was, I think, one of the things One of the things we did, there was a thing where you just kind of, like, walked around, and, like, that was okay. But then there was, there was something else where, like, stuff was moving, or it was, like, a roller coaster or something. I was like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> can't do that um but that's it yeah that's what i was like it does seem i would love to i'm intrigued to try it but like hey i'm not gonna buy myself an oculus thingy well, and be but that's I, the thing i keep thinking about buying one of these oculus things like they just maybe, keep adding more cool like not necessarily cool but they keep adding more stuff to it and the prices aren't ludicrous how much does how much does one of the the like modestly priced? Ones I, I, that's what I was just looking up. So this you need the Quest Two. Um, they're out of stock, so the website isn't telling me what the price is. That's annoying. So let's try this somewhere else. Uh, uh it's a five hundred dollar headset, which isn't cheap, but it's not out of. I mean, an Apple Watch is. 500 bucks you know if i had a job i could do that <laughs> <laughs> that that line is right up there with if i won the lottery i would i was really counting on the vaccine lottery but... <laughs> the vaccinillion isn't gonna buy you a, a, an oculus quest i hate to break it to you but um but yeah they, i keep seeing all the cool stuff that come out and i'm like god this is kind of like i watch tv on a tv like an idiot i could be watching it in my vr headset Right. Infinitely large TV. And then if you, me, and Dan got one, we could do the show in a workspace. Let's see, see, that's what I was, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like maybe what this is building to is that we all need to take collectively as a, as a don't panic family, we need to take the Oculus Quest challenge. Okay. How and about then this? we can record the show in VR. 
There's a website, I've used them before, called Lens Rentals. And they rent, like, camera equipment and stuff. And they're good, and they ship it to you in, like, a nice case, and you have it, and then they give you the return label. We, You can do a seven-day rental of an Oculus Quest 2 for $41. Oh, my God. That might be a pre... Now, the only thing is the shipping is... It, that $41. Doesn't <laughs> no, it, well, you laugh, but it is, like, $25. But still, you're Damn. under 100 bucks. you You're not, you know... Ooh, I mean that I could get on board with that. Maybe it'll change your life. That might be a fun because I never think to like rent this stuff I want to try but not own. Right. And I forget that people uh I forget that people do it. Yeah, with with shipping and tax, it would be seventy four dollars for a week. I mean that kind of seems like a lot. I mean it's less than five hundred dollars for a thing that that's, I'm never gonna use again. That's also true. <laughs> that's also true. But I have to do so whenever I decide if I'm going to buy some pricey electronic. I do the, I look at the rental, but then you also have to look at the eBay market where it's like, if I bought it, used it for two months and eBayed it. If that cost me like a hundred bucks, then for like a couple months that, you know, that's true. I've definitely done that a lot. That's how I bought a, like a $500 piece of equipment to digitize all my family's home videos. Right. And I swear to God, I sold it for like $520. Cause at the peak of the <laughs> pandemic, like, you, they weren't that you couldn't get them, and so I actually made money on it after owning it That's for awesome. years. It was great, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I did that a little while ago too. Like I bought like a couple years old Android phone for like one hundred and twenty dollars. It was great. It's still here. I don't use it for anything now. But... <laughs> well, good. Sell it and and use your profit to go buy an Oculus headset. Yeah, that that's true. As long as I get like a hundred bucks for it. You know, I, we'll, I yeah. Go ahead. We'll review this. We'll review this uh, proposal with Dan. Yes, we will go over it with. We'll look into the don't panic budget. <laughs> if things have been really tight since we lost our uh, Amazon affiliate uh, status, <laughs> but we, I, Sean, I built out all that crazy crap on the website to like. It's all my fault. You, well, why you had to go committing fraud? Although I will. Well, first of all, it's unintentional. Well, okay, no, it's unintentional. <laughs> mostly fraud. unintentional fraud. But also, why don't you go open an Amazon Associates account? <laughs> They're not going to know? I don't think so. Not if you register with a totally different email address and bank address. Okay. So feel feel free. Ha have all of our lifetime earnings, ex which if you exclude my possibly illegal linking, uh, I think was like $7. So it's all yours, champ. We worked hard for that seven dollars. I don't actually. To be honest with you, I don't think we ever actually even got it. I don't remember there ever being a deposit. So they said <laughs> it was seven, and then I'm sure some bullshit fees made sure we never actually got it. Wasn't it like? I remember talking about this. Wasn't? Isn't it like you have to, like you're you you're getting you're accruing the money, but there's some threshold that you yes. have to reach before they ever pay you. Yep, and the and threshold we never is more than seven. And by the way, I think like four or five of those dollars was from the time you bought those bone bone conducting headphones using our <laughs> link, which was I think I think still holds a record for the most expensive thing anyone ever bought using one of our affiliate links. So thank you. Which, which is also probably fraud because I'm the affiliate. But yeah, we got away with that. That was our slap on the wrist, and then they caught us when I made like right. forty dollars in referral money. <laughs> It's not a small company. They need every penny they can get. It's a trap. Yep. So, oh, boy. There you go. Virtual reality, man. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Well. That is that. Um, we can talk about one of the other two stories or we can move on to picks. What do you say, sir? Picks. 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 By the way, I got a new iPhone. Did you? Yeah, Is I cracked the, the screen on my old one. And so the company uh, the company bought me a new phone, which was very nice. So I got the 12 in the blue. Nice. And now I actually I like have... I, I used to never have a case on my phone, and I only ever broke one phone in my whole life. And now that I broke another, I've given up and I've put a case on it, which I hate. <laughs> I hate it, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's not ideal but maybe someday they'll figure out how to make phones out of something besides glass or just make concrete floors softer i'll settle for there either you 
mean, is that really an out of, out of bounds too. request? I don't think so. <laughs> pretty reasonable. I wonder what we spend more on, like just collectively as a as a world every year, like concrete floors or phones. Yeah, and to be fair, lots of your iPhone doesn't break on many surfaces. Everything breaks on a concrete floor. Think about that. Yep, concrete tile. Oh, That's awful. pretty much it, though. It's a death asphalt, trap. maybe. But like, even then, I feel like it's the concrete that gets you. Yep. So, so long to my ten hour. Hello to my twelve. You got any MagSafe accessories? I don't. I feel like no. that never went anywhere. Like I, I'd, I'd be happy to have some mag safety, but I, I don't know. I just it, like it being a whole separate thing that you had to buy separately. Just uh, never got there. Maybe I should go to the store and like try it out, and then I'll, I'll think it's really cool. I also like the last time I bought wireless chargers, I was disappointed in them. Yeah, they're hit or miss. They're hit, but yeah. I don't know. Is it faster? We're getting off topic. Is MagSafe theoretically, what's the advantage other than the magnet? I don't know if there's any advantage other than the mag. Right? Well, but that would be dumb because I put mine on my regular charger and it charges just fine wirelessly. I don't, what do I, like I never miss it. You know, it's never like I'm aiming and I miss it. See, I do miss it. Actually, the thing I do is, um, actually, I would especially do it like the 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 Android phone that I got on eBay that we were just talking about. It's completely black, and the the wireless charger I have is also black. So sometimes I would put this I would put this on the wireless charger, and then I would go to put my iPhone on the wireless charger, not realize there was a phone on there put my iPhone on and like, I wouldn't, you know, 12 hours later when I woke up and my phone was completely dead, that is when I would realize my mistake. That is amazing. I, I, I am, guess I am impressed by people who miss the wireless charger. Well, my phone yeah. didn't charge last night. It's a challenge, man. It's eye, hand-eye coordination. I, I guess I think that probably happened to me once. And so now I like, triple check that the right. phone has actually started charging. But well, it's not a great experience either. I did some quick Googling. I actually happen to have in front of me my two pad um, anchor wireless charger that according to the Amazon page charges at seven and a half watts on an iPhone. Uh, the MagSafe charger charges at 15 watts. So it's twice as fast. That's a lot of watts. It is zippy. Um, and part of that, I think it's because it's a, a 20 watt USB C power adapter. Oh, they don't even include mm -hmm. the power adapter. Right. Those sons of a bitches. You buy the charger for $40, and they got to spend <laughs> another $20 getting the power adapter. Rude. Shame on that. Shame Classic. on that. Anyway, getting off topic here. Uh, what's your pick this week, Colby? I decided, well, I'm try I tried to do this in the past where I was like, you know what? I'm going to read RSS feeds. Yes. Instead of Twitter. I don't Love know. it. I don't go on Twitter anymore anyways, which means I miss out on stuff. And random aside, I think what I need to do is delete all my followers, all my followees on Twitter and just follow like you and Dan. So I know what you're talking about when you talk about what Dan posted on Twitter. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then I can turn on notifications. I can get notifications. No problem. In any case, I tried to use that like Feedly one, the RSS reader thing. It was like fine. It was not very good. So I, I decided to like, I wanted to like re up and try this again. Um, and I looked up, you know, I Googled like, what's the best RSS reader for iOS and Macintosh? And everything said Feedly, but I didn't want to use Feedly again because I didn't like it. And then the second pick, I think it's iOS only is this app called Reader, Reader. 
it has a lot of E's. It's all E's, no A's. Reader 5. And it looks like, you know, just like a regular Mac app. And it, it is. It's a regular Mac app. And it works. It works great. It does the thing. Like, syncs over your iCloud, so you don't really have to do anything. Um, it does a bunch of things that I don't use. Uh, but mostly I like it. It kind of syncs in the background which I don't, I recall Feedly not really doing, but maybe it did if you like paid for it or something. It does cost some amount of money for both the Mac and iOS versions, but it's like a one-time, uh, it is not a subscription, which is a novelty nowadays. Yeah, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, nine ninety nine on the Mac app store, four ninety nine on the iOS store. Yeah, so... I don't know. I've been using it for a couple of weeks. I think my verdict is if you use the Apple ecosystem and you want a, f- a feed reader, it's a pretty good choice. Check it out. You know, I'm, I'm a big RSS guy going back to my Google reader days. Um, back, back when that was a thing. Uh, and then I moved to Feedly and I've been using Feedly. I don't really like it, but I was a windows guy. Now I'm a Mac guy. I'm going to try reader. I think Feedly is kind of, it's fine, but I find it kind of mediocre. So I'm, I'm legitimately going to give this a shot. Great pick. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't really do anything, which is fine. That's, that's, I don't want it to do anything. I just want to read this, the articles. I love RSS feeds. I, I think yeah. a way underrated way to, to get your info. It's a good way to get like, well, this might be a, a me work specific thing, but like, all like the important programming tools that you use, like they all have RSS feeds because they're the kind of people who make blogs. Um, so it's a great way to get news about like, oh, a new version of this thing is being released. Just pop in the RSS feed and like, boom. Yeah, I wonder too. Um, I'd have to look up if you can turn a Twitter feed into RSS. Like if there were a handful of, mm. of Twitter feeds, like you just had to have, and there was no blog that went with them. Oh my god! If you could set that up, I'm sure it exists. If that's not a thing, I'm going to build it <laughs> so I can. Then, then I don't even have to do any Twitter stuff. I can just follow your and Dan's at Sean uh, Jennings as an RSS feed. We're going backwards in time, buddy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a good idea. Next, next up, the the, uh, the message. We'll have a message board you can chat on. I'm absolutely going to build that if it's not a thing. That's awesome. Good pick. Reader Reader 5. Check it out on your respective app store. Uh, my pick this week, Colby, as I mentioned, uh, in my ever-going buying things for my house saga, um, I need light fixtures. Uh, but these days, A, they're hard to find because of manufacturing delays, but also B, I needed outdoor lights. Um, and there aren't as many as you would think. And most lights these days are very similar to each other. Like there's not a big variety. So your Home Depot's and your Lowe's, it's not great. Lampsplus.com um, is a, uh, it's all in the name. It's Lamps Plus. They sell lamps and other various lighting fixtures. I just picked up some outdoor lights for the front and sides of my house um, that got shipped in. No problem. The prices, it, it's a more premium lighting you know, this isn't your like $50 Home Depot lights. I mean, these are nice, nice lights, but they ship nice. They have a free return policy if you don't like it. Uh, and, and I will say they have a very good variety, which most sort of generic home center websites don't have. Uh, and the stuff shipped quick. Um, n- no complaints from me. So if you're looking for some uh, fun lighting to mix it up, um, you're, you're definitely going to get some inspiration and some cool ideas from lampsplus.com. Lamps Plus. This is cool. I have had that experience too, where it's, it's, it's really, can be really difficult to find lights. I know my parents, my parents just moved to a new house and they, they had a terrible time trying to find, like my mom ended up, like they had to move in. So they ended up getting a bunch of lights that like, they don't like at all, but like they had to put lights in. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough to, I feel like there's like no middle ground at stores. It's either like the Home Depot lights that are all like exactly the same. So generic. Yeah. Right. Or it's like the weird, like 
designer store you know the the like mid-level designer stores where they're like super weird yep like like spikes going everywhere it's like i want to like normal light that doesn't look like the the like bulb light that every home depot light looks like but like not super weird can it well can you accommodate me in some way it, no one can it, no well i i'm moving to um black fixtures in my bathroom so it's like my tub faucet and mm. handle the shower head are all matte black my sink handle so i wanted a matte black metal mm. light yeah um home depot carries like three of them uh it's very hard to find but i will say the other thing that's really scary about lights is and this is true by the way of the whole internet because it's moved in this direction i cannot tell what is a quality product versus what is a drop ship from china cheaply made product anymore <sighs> Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. It's not just Amazon. It's everybody these days is doing it where they allow third-party sellers or they just you know slap a new name on something. Yeah. Lamps are just like that. Like I've been on some of these websites where I'm like, that light looks cheap as hell. Lamps Plus, they are made in China, but at least they're of good quality because you're spending a good dollar amount and they're a legitimate <laughs> website, which I like. It's an actual business. Yeah, like me, being made in China is not necessarily indicative of poor quality, but yeah, that's nice. That's a Wayfair is yeah. so, so... Scares the shit out of me. Right. It like, yeah, I feel like I know that on Amazon, like everything I buy on Amazon is like, is this from a, like a brand or is this just like some hot garbage? And it's like, it's usually hot garbage, but like Wayfair... It seems more legit somehow. Well, and that's what I tell people is, you know, as somebody who works at a company whose product is sold in Home Depot and Lowe's stores, like, they check your shit. Like, you can't just put anything into one of those stores. So when you buy something you know is, like, officially signed off on by Home Depot, at least there is a minimum level of quality. <laughs> like, it, you may not love it. There, but... there may be a maximum level of quality, <laughs> yes, but there's exactly. a minimum level. They're going to hit that, that sweet spot right in the middle, that nougat center, man. They're, they're going to they're gonna do it. But um, but when you got like a Wayfair or something like that, or Walmart.com has been, I don't know if you've been to Walmart.com. They Their third party is so out of control with the most bullshit stuff. It's it's absolutely wild. So no, be be careful what you're buying out there because uh, you never know what you're going to get. You know what I learned recently, as in within the last two days, I I love IKEA. Everybody loves yeah. IKEA, right? But there's IKEA shipping is terrible. Oh like, yeah, no, you got to go to the store, you, right? If you you order too much, like it's going to come on some weird like third party box truck, and you're going to get like a three hour window and like they're not going to give you all the stuff like so bad, but there's an Ikea store on Amazon now and you can buy a oh, really? lot of Ikea stuff on That's Amazon. Smart. They'd make yeah. so much money with good e- e-commerce. I mean, I-, I think people everywhere, I mean, of course it's a yeah. no brainer. And then you let Amazon but, handle, the, handle the logistics. Smart. Right. And it seems like I, I only looked very briefly, but it seems like it's uh it's not everything. Like you can't find like the full furniture. Which is fine, but it's like the the you know modestly sized things, like all the kitchen stuff, and like I don't know. Well, I guess I'm bankrupt kitchen. now. Thanks, yeah, Colby. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, now there's no barrier to me buying a ton of IKEA <laughs> stuff. Thanks, Champ. Yeah. Um. I be. That's great. No. Uh. Cool. Well, some good picks there. Um. And that is that. That's the end of the program. Very, very nicely done. Uh, Looks like we made it. I will wrap it up simply by teasing up for debate, as I do almost every week. Colby, we just finished Furious 7, a movie we both enjoyed that's pretty off the walls crazy. And next week, we're <laughs> going to be doing uh, The Fate of the Furious, um, which is going to be, I think, a really fun movie. Uh, I'm excited. We're continuing this series all month long and into September. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Amazing. So check that out over at UpForDebate.tv or wherever you get podcasts. Of course, this show is at Don'tPanic.io, our wonderful website. You know, Colby, believe it or not, we um, I was on our website the other day. We finally lapped a year of having this new website. And every time I uploaded a new show, I would go back and fix the This Week in Pickstory where the links were bad. Yeah. All the links are good now. 
We did it. We did it. So, so you can now get the full eight plus year history of this show and all of our picks on the website at any given time. Like uh, in the past, Colby, you picked Venmo in 2013. Good pick. You picked oh, yeah. four square parentheses. It's new in 2014. <laughs> uh, Batman Arkham Knight. Good pick. Episode 100. You did. Uh, oh, yeah. tw- what is 20,000 Hertz? That a podcast that was a podcast, yeah. or it may still be a podcast. I don't listen to it anymore. And last year, you picked the Breville Immersion Blender. Mm. So, yeah, very, very nice job. Uh, so I can't check believe that I only picked that last year. Yeah, I crazy? must have picked it after having it for a while. Yeah, that's you were looking around your house for something to pick, and that was right. the first thing you saw. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. So go you to know, the website. You know, say what you will about the don't panic IT uh, <laughs> department, but <laughs> I feel like the the we have like managed several several website transitions, like pretty spectacularly. I think. Uh, we have not lost any data. No, there's a lot of data, so that you're good. And like we really could have. There was the the infamous time where we got <laughs> locked out of the server and and face the Facebook authentication API we were using got shut down, so like we actually couldn't get into the website. <laughs> it was a dark day in podcasting, man. Yeah, and we we made it out somehow. We got that data. We, we have all these picks now. They're there. Thanks to your tireless efforts. They're there's all a, correct. There's again. a little toggle at the top so I can go audio or video. I mean, this is great. My only regret is that we don't have like a, like a downloaded snapshot of all the websites that are defunct now. Cause like a lot of, let's be honest, Dan's like weird app picks are like all defunct now. <laughs> they don't like the windows, windows tools that would, that we used to throw around and love. You shouldn't do this, but I think it would be great if you could set up a system that just pinged all the URLs that we picked just to see, yes. cause there are some I've clicked on that are just literally like, don't go anywhere. Right. Um, yeah. I can do that. I can do that. Out. I can just run through them all. Colby, your time is valuable. Please don't waste it on our website. It's, Thank it's... you. <laughs> well, uh, but it's great. It's a great website. Go there. Check it out. Make Colby's time valuable by going and checking out our website. Don't panic.io. It's very nice. Uh, and of course, subscribe to the show wherever you get podcasts. It's the best way to get us in your feed. Whenever we do a new episode with the video version on YouTube, you can see Charlie the cat on the video. So that's pretty cool. Um, Hanging out. Uh, of course, you can follow us at Don't Panic Show on Twitter and email us at gmail.com. Do it. You definitely should. Uh, we'll be back next time with more tech news and more Dan Miller. But until then, he's Colby. I'm Sean. Thanks for being here. We'll see you on another great episode of the Don't Panic.